Morningstar. Today is Volunteer Appreciation Sunday. We extend our deepest gratitude to all of our ministry volunteers for pouring their hearts into this congregation and serving as vessels of God's love. We simply can't do ministry without you. Now, let's dive into some exciting announcements. First up on April 21st, it's Compassion Sunday. Join us in supporting children living in poverty and visit the information table in the lobby on that Sunday to learn more and find a child to support. Also, don't forget to mark your calendars for voter registration on Sunday, April 21st and Sunday, May 5th. Your vote matters, especially in important elections. Calling all of the men, there will be a men's fish fry on April 23rd, kicking off the men's season 2024. Join us for delicious fried fish, fellowship, and reflection as we gather under the theme, I am him, humbled, inspired, and motivated. Now, the following week on April 30th at 7 p.m., the men will be having their first man talk session. Visit the, our website for more information. And make sure that you let all of the men in your life know about this amazing event. Join our young adults for their young adult life skills session on April 25th beginning at 7 p.m. at our Security Boulevard location. Our building is located at 6665 Security Boulevard. This powerful and insightful session on finances will discuss the importance of saving, budgeting, and investing. For more information, please reach out to Young Adult Ministry at msbcministries.org. On Sunday, April 28th, right after the 1130 a.m. service, we will be having new members church tour. This is a fantastic opportunity to explore our church and learn more about our wonderful campus. And later that evening, we will come together for our monthly prayer service beginning at 6 p.m virtually on our streaming platforms and in person in the sanctuary. Let's come together to experience the power of prayer. Attention all creative minds. We're in need of instructors for our sunny Sundays happening every Sunday in July. Join us in shaping young hearts and minds through engaging sessions in writing, drama, crafts, and more for our summer Sunday school program. Make sure you mark your calendars for Faith Fest 2024, a two night revival event happening on May 14th and 15th. Join us to experience the powerful preaching of Dr. Lance Watson on May 14th and Pastor Sharon Riley on May 15th. You won't want to miss it. Finally, meet us in the sanctuary for an evening of powerful intercession with What Happens When Women Pray on Sunday, May 26th at 6 p.m. For more information on any of these events, please visit our website or scan the QR code on your screen. Let's stay connected and make these moments unforgettable. Hello everyone, I'm Johnny Hodge, and I'm thrilled to share with you about our upcoming Family Matters mini session. Our primary goal here is to emphasize the significance of families in our lives and to provide a space where we can grow together as a community. At the heart of our mission is the belief that family matters deeply. They are the cornerstones of our society, the source of our strength, and the foundation upon which we build our lives. It's with this vision in mind that we create a series of sessions designed to address the dynamic needs of families and enhance spiritual growth and connections. The journey of a girl dad is five weeks long. It's for men. However, on the fifth week, the girl dads are inviting girls and ladies to join us for our girl dad dialogue. Ladies must register to join this session. For more information, please refer to the flyer, visit the website, or chat with one of our Family Matters ministry facilitators at the table after every service. But let me tell you, this session is just one piece of the puzzle. Whether you're a husband, a wife, a parent, a sibling or child, there's something here for everyone. Our sessions cover a range of topics from effective communications and single parenting to living in a blended family and breaking generational curses. We want to ensure that every member of the family feels seen, heard, 
and supported on their journey. So I encourage each and every one of you to join us. Let's come together as a community, united in our commitment to strengthening our families and deepening our connections. Because when family thrives, communities flourish and lives are transformed. For more information on any of the classes, visit the Information Center for complete class information or scan the QR code on the screen to register. I can't wait to see all of you at our Family Matters mini sessions. Let's embark upon this journey together. Hello, Morningstar family. We are thrilled to announce the launch of our newest endeavor, the MSBC Congregational Care Ministry. This initiative is designed to nurture and strengthen the relationship between the congregation and church leadership as we continue to grow in our faith journey together. Bishop Debman's vision is that every member of our church family feels connected, supported, and equipped along their spiritual path. Our Congregational Care Initiative aims to connect each member with a dedicated diagonal partner team, ensuring that everyone is familiar with our available resources and has a clear point of contact for assistance during times of need. Through proactive outreach efforts, including quarterly communications via email, text messages, calls, and social media, we aim to keep you informed, engaged and connected to the vibrant community here at Morning Star. But our commitment doesn't end there. We're also here to provide timely responses to your inquiries, concerns, and prayer requests. Additionally, we're excited to offer planned events and activities where you can come together as a community, fostering deeper connections and shared experiences in our faith journey. As part of our dedication to accessibility and support, we're introducing the Diaconate Connect and Share table after services in April and May. Here, you can engage directly with our church leadership, receive guidance on various ministries, and find the support you need. For those seeking additional assistance or wishing to connect with their Diaconate team members, please visit the MSBC website for more information. We are truly excited about this opportunity that lies ahead with the MSBC Congregational Care Ministry. Together, let's continue to grow, connect, and support one another as we journey in faith Thank you for being an integral part of our Morning Star family. Star. Today is Volunteer Appreciation Sunday. We extend our deepest gratitude to all of our ministry volunteers for pouring their hearts into this congregation and serving as vessels of God's love. We simply can't do ministry without you. Now, let's dive into some exciting announcements. First up on April 21st, it's Compassion Sunday. Join us in supporting children living in poverty and visit the information table in the lobby on that Sunday to learn more and find a child to support. Also, don't forget to mark your calendars for voter registration on Sunday, April 21st and Sunday, May 5th. Your vote matters, especially in important elections. Calling all of the men, there will be a men's fish fry on April 23rd, kicking off the men's season 2024. Join us for delicious fried fish, fellowship, and reflection as we gather under the theme, I am him, humbled, inspired, and motivated. Now, the following week on April 30th at 7 p.m., the men will be having their first man talk session. Visit the 
our website for more information. And make sure that you let all the men in your life know about this amazing event. Join our young adults for their young adult life skills session on April 25th beginning at 7 p.m. at our Security Boulevard location. Our building is located at 6665 Security Boulevard. This powerful and insightful session on finances will discuss the importance of saving, budgeting, and investing. For more information, please reach out to Young Adult Ministry at msbcministries.org. On Sunday, April 28th, right after the 11.30 a.m. service, we will be having new members' church tour. This is a fantastic opportunity to explore our church and learn more about our wonderful campus. And later that evening, we will come together for our monthly prayer service beginning at 6 p.m virtually on our streaming platforms and in person in the sanctuary. Let's come together to experience the power of prayer. Attention all creative minds. We're in need of instructors for our sunny Sundays happening every Sunday in July. Join us in shaping young hearts and minds through engaging sessions in writing, drama, crafts, and more for our summer Sunday school program. Make sure you mark your calendars for Faith Fest 2024, a two-night revival event happening on May 14th and 15th. Join us to experience the powerful preaching of Dr. Lance Watson on May 14th and Pastor Sharon Riley on May 15th. You won't want to miss it. Finally, meet us in the sanctuary for an evening of powerful intercession with What Happens When Women Pray on Sunday, May 26th at 6 p.m. For more information on any of these events, please visit our website or scan the QR code on your screen. Let's stay connected and make these moments unforgettable. And uh, my name is Sean Wilkinson. This is my beautiful wife, Angelique Wilkinson. And we are attending uh, Morningstar Baptist Church's uh, event for uh, pregnant women in our community. And, and we are here in representation of our daughter who we lost in 2017, who was eight months pregnant and uh, about to have a baby, but she, uh, she didn't have the opportunity to have a baby shower. And uh, Morningstar Baptist Church is putting on this event to help those and helping them with some of their needs. And so what we did, we decided to put a bundle package together for a, uh, two single moms or two expecting mothers to help them on their way so that they can start off
Sunday. Today we are here to give a big shout out and a huge thank you to the backbone of our ministry, our incredible volunteers. Whether you're an usher, greeter, dancer, intercessor, or interpreter, we appreciate you. Whether you're setting up displays, lending your voices to the choir, or volunteering behind the scenes in the sound, lighting, video, media, or photography ministries, we appreciate you. Our health ministry, who promotes healthy living, disease prevention, and early detection, and the overall well-being of our mind, body, and spirit. Thank you, our new members ministry, who serves to welcome and integrate our new members into our church community. We appreciate you. To our church officers, our Christian education and spiritual development leadership and facilitators, your dedication does not go unnoticed. Trust me when I say, we see you. From the bottom of our hearts, we acknowledge the invaluable contributions that each and every one of you make to this ministry day in and day out. Our life groups volunteers, our children, youth, young adults, singles, seniors, men, women, and couples, we really do appreciate you. To those visiting the prisons, the sick and shut in, and engaging in community outreach, thank you. Food giveaways, community baby showers, quarterly days of service. In every interaction, your commitment and your passion shines through. And let's not forget our ministry leaders and agents of change. Your vision, guidance, and unwavering support inspires us all to reach greater heights. Thanks to all of you who support the First Family. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the depths of our hearts for all that you do to make Morning Star who she is. You are the foundation upon which Morning Star stands, and we are so grateful for your presence in our church and, of course, our community. Here's the many, many more moments of serving, connecting, and transforming lives together. May God's blessings be upon you. Praise the Lord, Morning Star. Praise the Lord, Morning Star. Happy Volunteers Sunday. We thank God for you on this Sunday morning. If you could just stand to your feet as we go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you, Lord. God, we thank you for bringing us into this sanctuary one more time, oh God. God, we thank you for the lives of your people on today, Father God. How you have blessed us and kept us and given us various gifts, Father God, as you have discerned, Father God, so that we can sing, we can minister, Father God, we can pray, we can evangelize, Father God, we can serve your people, Father, and so we say thank you, God. Now, God, as always, Father God, we invite you in to this space, oh God. We invite you, Father God, to let loose freedom in this house on today, oh God. God, we thank you in advance, Father God, for the lives that you're going to change on today, Father God. We thank you for the salvation that's coming forth on today, Father God. God, I ask that you would bless Bishop afresh, Father God, anoint him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, Father God, so that he can pour out the oil, Father God, that you have given to him to break the yokes, Father God, and to set the captives free. And so, Holy Spirit, we invite you just to have your way in this place have your way in our lives on today father god change our minds and hearts in jesus name we do pray amen 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 praise the lord philippians 1 verses 3 through 6 says i thank my god every time i remember you constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. Let our hearts overflow with thanksgiving for the blessings of fellowship and the gift of salvation. Let our prayers be lifted with joy, knowing that our God hears and responds to our worship. Let our spirits be strengthened with the confidence that the work God has begun in us will be brought to completion in Christ Jesus. 
to God be the glory for the things he has done. Praise the Lord, Morning Star. This is our call to worship. And come on, while you got those hands, giving the Lord praise. The highest praise is hallelujah. Worthy is the lamb that was slain, the one who gives us victory. His name is Jesus, and we've come to celebrate him this morning. So we can we give the Lord a high praise? Simple song says hallelujah. Hallelujah, we give you glory, we give you praise. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Simple goes home. Song goes like this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty.
no one can take his place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Come on, let's glorify that name this morning. There is no name greater than the name of Jesus. Angels are bending low right now, crying, holy, holy, holy to the Lord of hosts. It's a wonderful thing about Jesus. He is the greatest name above all names. Come on, God says, I am that I am. Whatever you need me to be, that's what I'll be. So I love calling that name. Amen. Hallelujah. We love to call your name Jesus. to call the name of Jesus this morning. Can we be one big aggregation of worship? Come on. We want to magnify the name of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I love calling on the name of the Lord. Come on, simple song. Y'all know it goes like this. We love to call your name in something we cannot explain. That
call the name. about that name the name woke you up this morning the name put strength in your body the name changed your life and we've come I need somebody just to celebrate the name just celebrate the name Jesus don't, don't worry about what your neighbor's doing you celebrate the name of Jesus we come to praise him to honor the name of our God on this day we celebrate, this is our Volunteers Appreciation Sunday. We salute all those who make ministry happen week after week, day after day. We thank God for their service. Thank God for their willingness to make sacrifice after sacrifice to make ministry. You mean so much to the Morning Star Church and we're just grateful and thankful for who you are and what you do. This whole weekend, we have been doing great ministry. Friday night, we had a special dinner for our homeless population. We brought them in on buses, served them meals, to sent them home, we sent them back to the shelters with basic necessities. We just thank God we were able to serve them. You know, yesterday, we had a community baby shower. We served over 200 expected mothers and yesterday, scrollers and cribs, pampers and milk, so much things, so many things. We're able to be a blessing to them. And I want you, as a matter of fact, as we prepare to lift our morning offering, our tithes, and our gifts this morning, I want you just to hear a testimony from yesterday that was a blessing to so many at the Community Baby Shop. We're going to play that right now. Uh, my name is Sean Wilkinson. This is my beautiful wife, Angelique Wilkinson. And we are attending uh, Morningstar Baptist Church's uh, event for uh, pregnant women in our community. And, and we are here in representation of our daughter who we lost in 2017, who was eight months pregnant and uh, about to have a baby, but she, uh, she didn't have the opportunity to have a baby shower. And uh, Morningstar Baptist Church is putting on this event to help those in helping them with some of their needs. And so what we did, we decided to put a bundle package together for a, uh, two single moms or two expecting mothers to help them on their way so that they can start off the life of their new child in a positive manner. And uh, we just um, thank, thank goodness for um, Shanika, the event coordinator, of course the church and the pastor and the first lady for allowing us to come in and provide uh, this uh, first time gift to these two young beautiful queens. Amen. Um, when Shanika told me what she was doing, um, we were always trying to figure out how can we honor um, Akia. And so I talked to my husband about it and we said, well, the last thing she was trying to do for herself was give herself a baby shower. And so when she told me she was doing this, I said, oh, what a way to honor her, but honor a new mom because life goes on. Mm -hmm. And we know that um, Akia and the baby is resting with God because he is the keeper of our soul. She was saved. And so 
I kind of feel like be, being in the midst of all this, what the enemy meant for evil, mm -hmm. God turned it around for his glory, and that is helping somebody else um, who may need it. And so this allows her legacy to continue on mm -hmm. and her spirit to live and baby boy spirit to live, and we pray that it could be a blessing to another mom. So this was definitely um, heart touching. What a blessing. We were able to serve 200 uh, expected mothers on yesterday, their families, they went scrollers and cribs and car seats, so many items they were able to leave with because of your generosity, your faithfulness. So Norna Star, thank you so much for all you do to make ministry happen. Come on, celebrate yourselves this morning. This is what ministry is. We empower our community and we make a difference. I'm going to ask you right now to prepare yourselves to give, prepare our tithes and our offerings. And we are, at Morningstar, we are generous givers. We don't mind being a blessing to somebody else. We understand it could be the other way. It could be the other way, but God keeps on pouring to us that we can be a blessing to so many persons. So let's prepare our gifts right now. Your tithes, your offerings, your gifts for scholarship your gift for missions, your gifts for outreach. Many persons that give on those online platforms, give the five text to give, Cash App, and Fellowship Venmo. Others mail their gifts in, they're making it happen right now. Some drive there to the church. Others use the envelope system. Envelopes are in your pews right now. And we encourage you to prepare your offering right now, your tithe. And we don't just give God uh, the minimum. We give God the best. Because God's been faithful to us. Look at, look at your neighbor and say, God's been faithful to me. And if your neighbor ain't talked to you, listen, you have my permission right now. Get your stuff, move to the other side of the sanctuary. You will, see, you will be by a grateful person. Someone who understands that God's been good to them. God is faithful to them. God keeps on making ways for us. And that's what we do here at Morning Star. We walk in obedience. We are disciplined and faithful givers because this is what the Lord requires of us. When you're ready to give, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Those at home, worship with us online, those in the sanctuary, will you stand to your feet as we prepare ourselves to give. We prepare ourselves to honor the God of our salvation for all he does for us, how he makes ways for us, how he uses us to be a blessing to so many others. We, we don't just come to get, we come to give. We come to make a difference. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We come before you, God, with these tithes and offerings. God, asking you to bless them. It is an act of worship. Father God, we thank you for all that you continue to do in our lives. You continue to be good. You continue to watch over us. You continue to bless us, God, in so many ways. Thank you, Lord, and I ask that you bless these tithes and offerings that it is for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. We're giving now. We're honoring God. We've been faithful to the faithfulness of our God who saved us and makes ways for us. Our ushers are coming to serve those who use the envelope system. Those who use the online platforms are making their way there right now. Because we understand the goodness, the mercy of our God, his grace kindness towards us how God keeps on making ways our music ministry is coming now to prepare us for the word of God anybody trusting in God in this season now we're going to have congregational choir rehearsal for a moment so I'm going to teach you the chorus of this and then you're going to sing it when it's time for the team to sing alright so all you're going to say is what it goes like this I trust in God my Savior, the one who will never fail, he will never fail. You say, I trust in God. Come on, say, my Savior. My Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. So that was choir rehearsal. So now we're going to sing this corporately. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all got Y'all know what to do now. And we're going to sing this and sing a song to the Lord about trusting in God in every season of our lives. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Jesus.
Blessed assurance Jesus is mine He's been my fourth man in the fire Time after time I'm born of His Spirit Washed in His blood And what He did for me on Calvary Is more than enough Here's your line, say, I trust in God Everybody say, I trust in God My Savior, my Savior Come on, we got to sing to the Lord Who will never fail He will never fail Come on, let's sing it together, morning stars. I trust in God. I trust in God, my Savior. My Savior. The one who will never. Come on, y'all better sing it. Fail. He will never fail. I love this second verse. It says, perfect submission. All is at rest. I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my steps. Oh, that's the line right there. So this is my story. Yes, it is. This is my song. I'm praising my risen King and Savior all the day long. Come on, you know what to say. Everybody say, I trust in God, my Savior. My Savior, the one who will never, who will never fail. fail. He's never slack in his promises. Come on, I trust in God. My Savior, he is the one who will never
anybody trusting in the Lord? Anybody trusting in Jesus? We'll take you at your word, Lord. We'll take you at your word. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him, all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Finish the line, say, Philippians chapter 1, verse number 3 calls for our attention this afternoon. It's there that we find these words recorded. I thank my God every time I remember you and all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have in you my heart. Whether I am in chains of defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you today for the privilege to know you, to love you, and to enjoy you. We thank you, God, for your grace. We discern that your grace is sufficient and your grace makes ways for us. And so, God, right now, focus our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirits on you that we are determined to receive from you. And now may the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my God and my Redeemer. And the people of the faithful God said, Amen. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 says, I thank my God every time. I remember you. I want to talk from this thought, this tag, and this third installment of this Lord's Day. I want to talk from this thought. I appreciate you. Look at someone and just say, I appreciate you. 
I believe, y'all, that two of the most significant, two of the most impactful, two of the most powerful and fruitful words in the English language are the words, thank you. Here in this text, Paul, writing on behalf of himself and his young mentee in ministry, Timothy, he tells the church at Philippi, thank you. Thank you for being there. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for being friends who stick closer than a brother. He tells them thank you because he wants them to know that they have made a huge impact on his life, his ministry, as well as the ministry of his young protege, Timothy. And so Paul shares his appreciation and his gratitude for how the church at Philippi has helped him spread Jesus. He realizes that he and Timothy would have never been able to make the impact for Jesus that they are making if they did not have the help of the church at Philippi. And so it's Paul who clearly understands that the influence that he has in ministry is a direct result of the people who have been there to help him. Look at your neighbor and say, you help me. He's excited about the people, their impact, their support, their commitment to him and his ministry. The people, Paul says, are the real heroes. The people are the ones who deserve the credit. The people are the ones who have been the difference makers in his life and in his ministry. Paul says the people worked with him. They worked with him behind the scenes. The people prayed for him. He said the people were encouraged to him. And look at the Bible. It says, I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day up until now. And then he drops his line. He says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you, he shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so on this Volunteers Appreciation Sunday, Paul makes this great statement to the church at Philippi. He says, thank you. He says, I appreciate you for your goodness and your mercy. I appreciate you for standing by my side. I appreciate you for being a friend who sticks closer than a brother. I appreciate you for never leaving me nor forsaking me, but always somehow making way, making time in your life to be a blessing to me. He says, and so on this day, I thank God for a person that morning star who rises early in the morning to give God their time and their talents. I thank God for persons who serve the Lord with joy. I thank God for men and women who love God so much they sacrifice to make sure that his name is lifted up. Paul says, I thank God in my remembrance for every one of you, always offering every prayer of mine with joy and with specific results. For all of you, thanking God for your partnership, your participation, both your comforting fellowship and your gracious contributions in advancing the good news from the first day up until now. And let me footnote right here because oftentimes the impact that you make will not be seen because you are impacting faith. You missed what I just said. The impact that you make is not always seen because you are impacting faith. You, you, you are impacting the faith of somebody. You are encouraging somebody. You allow them to see that faith in God really works and faith in God really matters. You are making somebody's faith stronger. You're making somebody's faith come alive. You're making somebody's faith a viable weapon against principalities and powers. You are making somebody's faith an asset. You are planting seeds for a future harvest. Paul says, I thank God in every remembrance of you. So let me encourage the volunteer who wonders if what you do matters. You wonder if your labor in the Lord is making a difference. You, the word from God to you is this. Don't get wearied in your well-doing. Don't get discouraged if it seems like your labor is in vain. Don't get frustrated when it seems like it's not paying off. And no one notices you, but you are making a difference. Can you help me help your neighbors and neighbors? You're making a difference. I want to suggest to a volunteer this afternoon that you are appreciated. You should never measure your impact by the silence of the thank yous or the noise of the applause, but by the hearts that are being changed and the yokes that are being broken. I want to deal with this, y'all, because what the church of Philippi may not have known is that God was using them to encourage the leader. 
God had used them to give Paul the encouragement that he needed to keep fighting for the last 10 years of his ministry. God had made them a bridge for Paul to make it into his next season. For Paul, and understand, Paul, they, they, they didn't know how much of a blessing they were, but Paul said, you're blessing me real good. God, God had made them the hope that Paul needed. Let me share with you that you don't know all that God is doing through you right now. You may not know that people are being saved because of you. You may not know that people People are being healed because of you. You may not know that yokes are being broken because of you. You may not know that hearts are being fixed because of you. And what you must know is that you are making a difference. And guess what? You are appreciated. Y'all can help me preach. Holler at your neighbors that you are appreciated. And what you must know is that ministry would not be the same without you. Ministry will not be as strong without you. Ministry will not be as encouraging without you. And the Bible says that Paul begins to write this letter. And before sharing any prophetic word or before sharing any new revelation from God, Paul spends the introductory moments of this letter thanking the church for the difference that they've made in his ministry. He thanks them for how the church had given him strength to fight through the rejections of life. He thanks God for how the church had provided his need when he didn't know how his needs will be met. He thanks God for how the church helped him to get through the low seasons of life. And let me tarry for a moment because so often we base the difference that we are making on what people do immediately and not how they live long term. We base the difference on that, that we are making on the applause, the pats on the back and the gifts that people bring when in reality Paul says your impact is not measured in the gifts that you receive nor should it be measured in the applause that comes your way but rather in your commitment to be in agreement with your call. Preach, Dwayne Dabnum. Paul says, when you are committed to your call, do this. Be confident of this, that the God who has called you will make a difference through you. Be confident of this, that the God in you is doing a great work through you. Be confident of this, that the God that God is using you to plant seeds for a due season. And this is where I want to build some traction more to start because the bridge between what we do and how we respond about what we do and what people say about what we do is where many of us are stranded. We are stranded in between the work and the applause, the seed and the harvest because we are looking for the affirmation from the wrong place and the wrong voice. Sometimes we are looking for the affirmation from those who don't understand the service that you give just might save their life. Paul says to the church of Philippi, be confident that God is doing a great work in you. Be confident that God is you in you. Be confident that God is doing a mighty work in you. Be confident that when you abide by the plans of God, he who has begun a good work in you shall perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. And that's where I need to pause and make this strong suggestion that regardless of who affirms you, who don't like you, who fails to affirm you, who talks about you, who lies on you, when you are in the will of God, be confident that you are making a difference. Can y'all help me help your neighbor? Say, neighbor, you're making a difference. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a person who wonders, am I valued? Am I making a difference? There's a greeter who's given their best, but you are wondering, am I making a difference? There's a ministry worker who is wondering, am I appreciated? Am I making a difference? But I've been anointed to tell you on this Lord's Day, you are appreciated. <laughs> Therefore, be confident. Be confident that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Be confident that God's hand is on your life. Be confident that God walks with you. Be confident that somebody's faith is being made stronger by your faith. Be confident that the God who called you will honor you. Be confident that the God who called you is going to walk with you. Be confident that you are appreciated. And when you are devoted to your call and confident in your call, the Bible wants you to know that God is doing a thing through you. You, when you are confident to your call and God calls plant seeds uh, in your life that will make the devil back up. When you are confident and committed to your call, seeds are being sown that the devil can't stop. Seeds are being stoned that will break the devil's back. Seeds are being stoned that will so turn this world upside down. When you are committed to your call and confident in your call, blessings on top of blessings are being released from your life. Can I deal with this? Because so many laborers go through life feeling unappreciated wondering if they are valued if they are making a difference so many of us walk through the hallways of life looking for confirmations celebrations and commitments that may never come but what the bible reminds us of is this be confident 
Holler down your pew. Just say confident. Confident that as you walk in the will of God, you're making a difference. Confidence that God has appointed you for such a time as this. Confident that there's anointing on your life that's making blind folks see, lame folk walk. Confident that you are moving mountains out of the lives of people. And he who has begun a good work in you, he shall perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. Can I find some folk who could praise God? The folk may not celebrate you. Folk may not lift you up but God keeps on saying I woke you up this morning I kept you in your right mind I'm using you to make a different talk Debnam watch this and what the word is suggesting to every volunteer and to every believer is that not only are you appreciated but Paul says to the church at Philippi I am committed to covering you you, you don't know when to shout do you God says, I am committed to covering you, protecting you, keeping you. The reciprocal of your services, I am going to keep you covered in prayer. I'm going to keep you soaked in the weapon of warfare. When you can't pray for yourself, I'm going to have angels praying for you. When you can't push yourself, I'm going to have people positioned all around you to stand by your side. Take heed to the word shared by Paul. I thank my God every time I remember you and all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with you because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. I need somebody to understand that what is going on in your life is that you are being prayed for. The reason you still have a smile on your face somebody's praying for you. The reason you're still in your right mind, somebody's praying for you. The reason the devil can't have his way in your life, somebody can't holler at your name and say, neighbor, somebody's praying for you. Uh, and as you work, as you work and serve, you are being prayed for. The blessing on your life is God is committed to praying for you. So Paul tells the church that what has kept me going through the rough days, the b tough days, what has kept me going through the frustration, the anxiety, the attacks, and the threats has been the reminder that you had me covered. That's why the devil tried, but he couldn't fix it. That's why the devil tried to take you out, but he couldn't take you out. You are covered. Come on. Holler at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you're covered. No, 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 no. Find somebody who ain't trying to look too cute. Say, you are covered. But Paul says, you're covering me when I was in need has made a difference. Let me suggest to somebody that God positioned the Philippian church to cover Paul who were not intimidated by the enemies of Paul. And what you must understand is that God has also assigned persons who are not deterred by the complexity of your situation to pray for you. They are not worried about the numbers of folk who can't handle you. They are assigned to pray for you. God has assigned intercessors and angels angels to keep you covered in prayer. Please be sensitive to the fact that what graces you as you serve is the protection of assigned angels, intercessors, and prayer warriors who are positioned by God to pray grace, pray mercy, pray peace, and protection over you. As a matter of fact, there is somebody right now praying for the grace of God to cover your life. You missed what I just said. There is somebody praying right now for the grace of God to cover your life. There is somebody, Sunday after Sunday, as you serve, as you sing, as you greet, as you intercede, there is somebody praying for you. The reason you can handle serving while under attack is because somebody is praying for you. I need to rewind that thing. The reason you can handle serving while under attack is because somebody is praying for you. The reason you can press your way to church despite going through hell, the last six days somebody's praying for you the reason you are not wilting under the pressure of principalities and powers in high places is because they are legions of angels praying for you the reason you are not responding with the same aggression that they come at you with is because somebody is praying that the spirit of calm will rest on you that's why you've got peace that surpasses all understanding somebody's praying for you because you are committed to serve God has committed to surrounding you with the spirit of prayer. And listen, you may not understand yet the value of having somebody pray for you, but understand that when your name is called in prayer, angels pay attention. 
when your name is called in prayer, the devil is put on notice. When your name is called in prayer, the devil has got to back up. Because the Bible says, touch not my anointing to my servant no harm. When your name is called in prayer, God is alerting the heavenly host to fight for you. That's why you ain't got to fight every battle. God sends angels to fight for you. That's why you're winning right now. God sends angels. I need somebody to praise God for every angel that's ever fought a battle. You could not fight by yourself. You're winning when they think you should lose. Why? Because when your name is called, yokes are broken. Yokes are destroyed. That's why what used to trap you can't catch you no more. That's why what used to bind you can't can't, what you, can't, can't handle you no more. Say, neighbor, you can't handle me, can you? Because because see, no matter what you do, I still smile, I still laugh, I still praise, I still worship, I still come to church, I still bless God. You can't. Say, neighbor, I'm being kept. Say, I'm kept by the grip of God. I'm kept by the hand of God. I'm kept by the peace of God. I'm kept by the joy of God. I'm kept by the power of God. I'm kept by the anointing of God. I'm kept by the favor of God. Paul says, I'm covering you. What, what, we're going to mess up today. Look, look, look. Say, neighbor, I got you covered. Say, when you're weak, use my faith. Say, when you're tired, I'll be there for you. When you don't know what to do, I'll pray for you. Somebody's. Let me help you. In my prayers for all of you, I pray with joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you, he shall perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. Paul is appreciative of what the Philippian church has done for him. And what has really encouraged Paul is the way they helped him. He says, you did more than show up for me. But what you did is you helped me carry the weight. You, you see, you, 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 you don't understand. Every now and then, you need somebody in your life who will pick up what you can't pick up by yourself. Who will pray you through when you can't pray yourself through. You, you carried what I couldn't carry by myself. Paul says, what, what was and is a heavy ministry load, you helped me carry it. He said, you did more than tell me you were with me. You, 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 you did more than talk out of both sides of your neck. But you anchored me when the winds were blowing. You, you did more than tell me it was going to be okay. You, 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 you did more than just did the churchy thing and rub my shoulder and said, baby, it's going to be all right. No, no, no. You did more than that. But you helped carry the weight. Oftentimes, people will tell you their thoughts and how they will handle your situation. But until they've been in your shoes, don't tell me not to cry. Don't tell me not to hurt. Don't tell me not to be afraid until you've been with Preach Debnam. You, 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 you needed more than a churchy answer. They, they, they will tell you they are praying for you. They will say, if you need me, call me. They, they will say, whenever you need me, I'll be there. Here's my issue. If you know I need you, how come I got to call you? Come on, help me, please. If you know I'm broken... If you know I'm going through hell, how come I, my phone cut off? How am I going to call you? My lights ain't on. How am I going to call you? I ain't got no. Paul understands the load of ministry. He, he, said, he said sometimes it's more he can handle by himself. And it was good to know that when it got heavy, they didn't just watch him. They help him. We, I'm, trying, I'm trying to contain myself. Say, neighbor, don't watch me go through a storm. Say, don't, 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 don't look, just look at me. Do something to help me. I'm locking right here because so often when the load of ministry gets heavy, people will stand by and watch. They will find ways to avoid and make excuses for not helping. They will watch you overwork. And, and, no, they will watch you overwork. They will watch you overwork. They will watch you overwork and say, you're working too hard. Well, I wouldn't have to work so hard if you did something. 
Who am I preaching to? Oh, I'm preaching to me. I wouldn't have to work so hard if you did some work. Often. Times what you need. And Paul says, the Philippians did this. They helped carry the weight. They pitched in and held up my arms. If someone was needed to serve tables, they were there. If someone was needed to clean the temple, they were there. They made themselves available to help carry the weight. They, they, they didn't just wait until it was convenient for them. Sometimes ministry will be inconvenient. Oh, I wish I had some help. Can I stay right there? Sometimes ministry will be inconvenient. They did more than find ways to benefit from ministry, but they found ways to help do the ministry. They made themselves available. So Paul says, I thank God for you. I thank God that you were there, and every now and then we ought to do like Paul and simply tell those who have been there, thank you. Tell the choir member, thank you for remembering the words through the song that changed my life. Tell the missionary, thank you for caring about my soul. Tell the Sunday school teacher, thank you for teaching me the word. Tell the AV person, thank you for making it so I can hear the word tell the usher thank you for getting me to my favorite seat tell the greeter thank you for laughing with me tell the person on the parking lot thank you for not cussing me out because you don't know what I went through last night tell the person at the door tell the person in the bathroom tell the person in the pew thank you for being nice to me thank you for being kind to me thank you for not looking through me thank you for not talking about me thank you for not laughing at me but thank you for praying me through. Can I find somebody who can tell God, thank you for praying for me. Thank you for loving on me. Thank you for fighting for me. Thank you for standing by my side. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for giving me my joy back. I'm getting out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm a close. I'm a close. He said, I'm committed to covering you. He says, Thank you for helping me carry the weight. But the Bible says, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. That messed me up. I always pray with joy. I pray for joy because I'm praying for you. And I see what's going to happen when God releases the blessing that you need. I pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on until the day of Jesus Christ. Paul says, I want to speak this word into your life in response to what you've done for me. He said, I see something on you that you may not see in yourself. We about to mess up. I, I see God doing something in your life that you have not, have not been able to see as of yet. And so I want to drop this revelation on you, Paul says. He said, God wants me to tell you this. Your oil will last. We about to mess up in here. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, your oil will never run out. Your anointing will never run dry. Your oil will last through the rough days, the lean days, the frustrated days, the anxious days. Can I get you high five? Your neighbor's the neighbor. Your oil will last. I'm ready to run this thing. The oil of the Lord is on your life. I'm about to mess up in here. The oil of the Lord is on your life. Find you somebody who you can touch and agree. I'm in the text. Your oil will last. The oil of the Lord is on your life. He who began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Your oil will last. Okay. High five to folk and just say your oil will last. Now find somebody who won't look through you. Say your oil will last no matter how low you go no matter how hard you're pushed no matter who can handle you you've got enough oil i need to tell somebody who's a little tired your oil will last i need to tell somebody who's a little weary your oil will last i need to tell somebody in the midst of a storm your oil will last i need to tell somebody who feels like you're in between a rock and a hard place your oil will last paul thanks the church for being there for him for helping 
loving him, serving with him, helping him carry the weight. But he also wants to encourage them. And so he says to them, be confident that your oil will last. You may feel like no one sees you, but the good news is your oil will last. You may feel like no one understands you, but your oil will last. You may feel like you get more than you get back, but your oil will last. Be not weary. Your oil will last. You may feel like you're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You're not smart enough. You're not tall enough. You're not wide enough. But understand this. Your oil will last. You're not just serving, but you're serving with oil. I need somebody who can testify. I must have some oil on my life to still serve like I serve the way I serve God must have touched me real good you're serving with the oil of God you're serving with the oil which explains why no matter what the people do you keep serving you're serving with the oil which explains why no matter how often they give you the side eye you keep on serving that explains why no matter how busy you are you keep on serving that explains why no matter how tired you are you keep on serving I need some tired folk some folk who've been through hell and high water some weary folk say neighbor I've been tired I've been weary I've been frustrated but I still serve cuz there's some oil on me that explains why no matter who else quits you can't quit because you got oil on you. High five your sanctified self. Say self, the oil is running. The oil is no. I need some oily folk. I need some folk who 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 who, who are, are mistreated, who are understood, un, 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 misunderstood, but you keep on serving. That's why no matter what others won't do, you keep on serving. And so on this volunteers appreciation day. I simply want to tell you thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for serving with the oil. Thank you for serving with the oil of joy. Thank you for serving with the oil of peace. Thank you for serving with the oil of calm. Thank you for serving with the oil of love. Thank you for serving with purpose. Thank you for being there when needed. Thank you for being there when you're tired. Thank you for being there when you're drained. Thank you for being there when you're frustrated. Thank you for being there when you're by yourself. Thank you for being a blessing to the people. Thank you for helping carry the weight. Thank you for helping us see Jesus. It's the oil on you. I'll let yourself say, it's the oil on me. Say, I'm only talking to about 50 folk. It's the oil on you. It, it's the oil on you. It's the oil on you. And that's what? It, it's the oil that keeps you serving. It's the oil that keeps you going. It's the oil that makes ways out of no way. And here's the holler. We need your oil. We need your oil. The church needs your oil. The People need your oil. The intercessors need your oil. The members need your oil. The neighborhood needs your oil. Your co-workers need your oil. Your family needs your oil. Your friends need your oil. You need your oil. The sick need your oil. The broken need your oil. The messed up need your oil. The lame need your oil. The homeless need your oil. The mistreated need your oil. The broken down needs your oil. Like Paul, I pray, here's my prayer for you, that your oil never runs out. I pray that the oil in your life is replenished. I pray that the oil on your life stays strong. I pray that the oil keeps you faithful. I pray that the oil reaches the highest mountain and flows to the lowest mountain. It's the oil that saved you. It's the oil that rescued you. It's the oil that restores you. Is there anybody who can testify? I got the oil. I ain't talking to the person who's sitting there with their legs crossed critiquing the sermon. I'm talking to the person who understands I'm oily. There's something on on me something on the inside of me something rising up on me something that reminds me that all things are working together for my good I need about 10 oily folk 
just to rush the altar right now. I need some oil at the altar. Where, where my oily folk? I, I need some oily folk to rush the altar and to act like there's something on you. There's something rising up in you. There's something that God's using to use you to bless his people. When you get here, find you somebody that you can connect with and say, neighbor, there's some oil on me. There's some oil on me. Say, there's some oil on me. There's some oil on me. And the Bible says that where two or three are gathered together, touching and agreeing, I'll be in the midst. Grab your somebody, say, neighbor, there's some oil on me. There's something on me. There's something moving me. There's something blessing me right now. We need the oil. We need the oil. We need the anointing that destroys every yoke. We need the anointing that sets the captives free. We need the anointing that, that makes your enemies footstools. We need the anointing that takes what the devil meant for evil and use it in our favor. Won't God do it? I said, won't God do it? Then thank you for the oil. Thank you for walking with me. Thank you for making ministry go. Thank you for doing what others won't do. Thank you for letting God use you. Thank you for being a blessing. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I need about 10 folks who are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless, bless. I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Magnify. Magnify, 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 magnify. It's the oil that's on you, that's destroying you. I, f I felt something break right there. I felt something break right there. I felt something break right there. Somebody just got their deliverance. Somebody just got their healing. Somebody just got restored. Somebody's life got that. It's the oil on you. That won't let you quit. It's the oil on you. I hear that sound. I hear that sound of chains being broken. I hear, I hear that sound. Receive it. Receive your restoration. You're being replenished at the altar. You're being refreshed and revived at the altar. Oh God. Hands lifted, who's able to? I need those who have received the oil. I need hands lifted. Those who want to receive it, singing. We need. We need. The oil.
sing that again. But I need some lifted hands in the building. That's it. Oil. It's time to receive the oil. Your neighbor has the oil you need. Your brother, your sister has the oil that you need. Lift it, take it up. The oil. Something's breaking right now. says be confident of this that he who has begun a good work in you will make it happen until Jesus returns what that means is God said I'm going to give you everything that you need in between now and then because when he comes you'll have him but I'm giving you the oil right now that gives you the power to be sustained restored strengthened and encouraged we're about to pray but here's what we're praying for that we not become weary that we not become frustrated God I felt something I don't know who you are but there's some persons who need to be at this altar right now I don't know where you are you need to be at this altar right now I want you to come right now you get here you get here right now you need to be at this altar you get here right now. I don't know who you are, but you get up here right now. I see you coming. God's restoring you. God's replenishing you. You've been drained. You've been tired. You've been ready to throw in the towel. But you can't. God has said, I have more for you. Be confident of this, that he who has begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I want you to pray, Sierra, that we not quit, that we not take the lack of applause as a sign that we're out of season. But you don't need that. You just have to be remain committed to the call of God on your life. God's doing something for you. I want you to pray that prayer for us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us, oh God. Do it now. Spirit of the living God, like the mighty rushing wind, fall fresh on us even now in the name of Jesus. With hands lifted all over the sanctuary, Father, we come before you, Father God, seeking your face, Father God, and seeking your presence on today, oh God. God, we have believed you and we have trusted you in seasons in and seasons out, Father God. We have trusted you to give us what we need, Father God. But life has been life in, oh God, and life has been hitting us on all sides, Father. And so we need you, Father God, to replenish us, Father God, and to restore us, Father God. You have given us the the opportunity, Father God, to come before your throne, Father God, with boldness, Father God 
to ask for the things that we want and the things that we need, Father God, as long as it's according to your will, Father God. So God, we need the refreshing on today, Father God. We need to be refreshed, Father God, so we can continue to journey through this race, Father God. God, we ask, Father God, even now at the name of Jesus, Father God, that you will pour out your spirit among us, Father God, from the crowns of our heads to the soles of our feet, so God. I ask, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would give us fresh oil on today, Father God, that you would start from the head, Father God, and that you would let us to allow, Father God, to go through all throughout this sanctuary, Father God, because we need you to finish the race, Father God. We need your strength, Father God, to make be made perfect in our weakness, Father God. We need you, Father God, to give us the tenacity, Father God, to keep going, Father God. God, I ask that you would silence the noise of the enemy in the name of Jesus, that you will unstop our ears, Father God, and that we can only hear what you have to say to us, Father God. God, we declare and decree in this sanctuary that no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper, Father God. We will finish strong. We will finish the race. We will finish the things that you called us to. The books will be written, Father God. The lives will be changed, Father God. The family's bloodlines will be restored, Father God. The financial overflow will come, Father God. All the things that you've declared about us will be, Father God. We will preach and teach your gospel, Father God. We will evangelize. We will serve in your church, Father God, because we are your hands and your feet, Father God, in the earth. So give us the strength, Father God, that we need to sustain, to endure, and to persevere. And we will finish strong. 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 Hallelujah. We will finish strong. We will finish strong. We will finish strong. Thank you, Jesus. your day my brother this is your day my sister you came to church on the right Sunday God is affirming his work in your life letting you know that you have been created to do more than what you have been doing you've been created for kingdom matters you're gifted you got skills you got the talent you got the grace covering your life and now God is saying what you need to do is plant yourself in the church somewhere and be shaped, matured, so that God can use you for his glory. This is your moment, this is your day, that you yield to the word and the will of God. You've been putting this off long enough, trying to tell you you didn't need church, you didn't need God, you need God. Right now, you're here, you... I'm talking to you, you need a church home where you can use your gifts, where God can bless you and shape you and mature you. Here's the place for you. 
here's the place for you. And what I want you to do right now is slide into one of these aisles from wherever you are in this building. Come to the front of this church. Yield to God's plan. Yield to God's purpose for you. Let God in and let God mold you and shape you that he can use you for his glory. That's you. You need a church home, a place to park your life, a place to see the power of God manifested in your life. You came to the right place. I want you to press yourself into one of these aisles. Get to the front of this sanctuary right now and leave the rest to God. God's going to prove to you and show you that His hand is upon your life. He has plans to prosper you, give you hope in the future. God bless you. I see you coming. I see you coming. I see you coming. I see you coming. I see you coming there. There are others. Just don't worry about who's looking at you. Don't worry about who knows you. You get up here. Leave the rest to God. God bless you. You're online with us. I want you to write in the chat. I need a church home and one of our online engagers will respond to you. You're in the building. I want you to walk down one of these aisles. You're online. You can walk. You can write in the chat. You can even text us. You can text MSBC Connect to 94000. MSBC Connect to 94000. In the building, you can walk the aisles. Online, you can write in the chat. You can text. You can email us at MSBC Membership at msbcministries.org. You can even call us 410-747-3417. But you can't pray that this moment gets by quick so you can go back to your old life. No. God has a plan for you, a purpose for you, a will for your life. Do me a favor. Morning Star, would you lift your hand right where you, you remember Morning Star? Just lift your hand right where you are. You remember Morning Star? Lift your hand real quick. Keep your hand lifted, Morning Star. Now do me a favor. Look to your right, your left, in front of you, behind you. Introduce yourself to that person. Say, God has a plan for your life. Say, God has a plan for your life. Ask them their name and say, God has a plan for your life. And tell them, say, it's time to walk in it. Say, it's time to walk in the plan of God for your life. It's time to walk in the plan of God for your life. Yield to God. You're at home with somebody, you, you share with them. You're in this building, don't, don't let their firmness turn you off. Just because they won't look at you don't mean you can't talk to them. I share this in, another, in other settings. Sooner or later, you'll either be rolled down the aisle or you'll walk down the aisle. Don't wait till they have to roll you down the aisle. You walk down first and you say yes to Jesus. Watch what he does in your life. Those who are connecting online, we praise God for you. We honor God for you with this moment. It means our teams will be reaching out to you, letting you know what your next steps are. But we celebrate you and we salute you for this moment in your life. Those who walk the aisles this afternoon, we pr praise God for you what this moment means, what this moment is all about. This is a great day. This is a major day in your lives. You're connecting with God, God's people, and God has a plan, a purpose for your life. And we're so excited about what we know God is able to do, what God is willing to do. All these persons here, this is family, your home now. Just welcome home, welcome home, welcome to the family. I want you to hear how excited family is that you've come home this afternoon. And I, I tell persons often, you make sure you come home on a regular. Because at home, the meal is tailor-made with you in mind. The meal, the sermon, the prayers, the songs, the dance, the ushers, the greeters, all do what they do with you in mind. Welcome home. Welcome to the family. Now, we do have one disclaimer. We share this all the time. We have one disclaimer. Here's our disclaimer. We are not perfect people. God's working on us. So you pray for us as we pray. We pray collectively for you. But this is home base for you now. And you get home and receive what God has for you. In just a moment, our teams will take you in the back and share information with you. But we thank God for you. Welcome home. Welcome to the family. Can we celebrate them, y'all? Come on, celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. The oil. We need the oil. We need the oil. We really need the oil. We need, we need, we need, we need, we need, we need the oil of the Lord. We really need the oil of the Lord. We need the oil. 
the oil. Paul says, I pray for you every time I remember you. How you partnered with me in the ministry from the beginning up until now. And so be confident that this, that he who has begun a good work in you, he shall perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. Here's what we're going to do. I want you to prepare ourselves to give our missions offering, our, our missions giving right now. I want every person who candles willing, who can do it without complaining, get a gift in your hand. Every person can get at least $10 in their hand. This is for our missions. We, we, it's clear we do great work in the community. Collectively, we're able to do great work. I want you to get a gift in your hand. You can use the envelope system or you can go to one of those online platforms. But this is what we do at More Than Star. This is our culture. We dealt with that yesterday in our leadership session. This is the culture of More Than Star. We do outreach. We do spiritual development, we do worship, we give. This is our culture. And we don't mind, we don't mind being who we are because God has called us to do great and powerful works in the kingdom. And we thank God for his hand upon us, the oil that's on this ministry. The oil that's on, this oil on this ministry. The oil that's on this house, on these people. And we thank God for what he's doing. Of God. Here's what we're going to do then. We're going to make our way. Don't forget Bible study this week in person and virtual midday, virtual only in the evening. Men's season kicks off and next week. I'm going to ask the following families to make their way to the altar areas. We ask God's blessings upon these gifts that God's given to them. I'm going to ask the family of baby, and if I, if I pronounce it wrong, correct me when you get up here. Kason, family baby Kason or Kason, if, they can, if they're here, make your way to the altar area. Kason Hammett, if you can make your way. Okay, I see you. If I, if I, if I mispronounced it, let me know when you get up here. Come here to my right. Then the family baby Caleb will come to my left. The family baby Caleb will come to my left. The family baby Kason will come here to my right. Y'all can just start walking this way. Right here, family of Kassan, family of Caleb, then the family of baby Kayla Ford. Where's Kayla? They're going to come to the center. Kason, did I say that right? Kason, thank you. Kason, got it. Kason. This is Caleb. Where's Caleb? Everybody came with the baby. Y'all brought everybody in the neighborhood, but y'all forgot the baby. This every house on the block, right? Bring. Come on. They'll make it. You bring the baby. You make that. They'll make it. You bring the baby. They'll make it. They'll get up here. And where's Kayla? Wait a minute. Am I missing a baby? I sort of have three. I see Caleb, Kason. Where's Kayla? Oh, right here. Callie. Thank you. I, I get me right. Get me right. Callie. Callie, Kason, Caleb. Got it. Caleb, Callie, like California. Kason. Black and white, they are. One of the greatest gifts that God gives to us is the gift of children who he allows us to shape, to raise, and to empower. 
It allows us to model for them what it really means to maneuver through this thing called life. And what God has done for you is blessed you with Kaysen and Caleb and Callie. And what he wants you to do with them is to shape them. Not shape them so that they fit into culture, but shape them so they understand kingdom. Give them ears to hear the voice of God, hearts to feel the warmth, the strength, the love of God. Don't just give them what it means, an ear to hear what culture is saying, but give them an ear and a heart to receive what God is doing in their lives. And as long as you give them what God is doing, they'll, they'll fit in everywhere because kingdom is everywhere. And what you must do then is model for them what kingdom living is all about. Praying, letting them see you in prayer, letting them see you in worship. Reinforcing what the preacher, the church leaders, Sunday school teachers share with them here. Because what we do here really does not matter if what you do at home is totally contradictory to it. So what you must do is reinforce what you, they hear in worship when you bring them to worship, when you bring them to worship, not send them, but when you bring them to worship, when you sit with them in the sanctuary and you receive what God is saying to you and teach them to receive what God is saying to them. Teach them at home how to pray, how to honor God, how to love on God. And when you do this, then you can say you've been, you've been a great parent because you share with them what, it, what God is saying, what God is doing. It's a, parenting is a privilege. It's a major responsibility. And it's one that we cannot take lightly. So ex if you accept the child, accept the privilege of rearing and raising the child God's way, there's a privilege, there's a responsibility, there's an obligation that goes with having God's children. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to bless them. Parents, what are you going to do when you get home and tomorrow, the day after? And will you bring them back to worship? I can bless them, but if you don't reinforce the blessing, then you miss the major opportunity to be a responsible parent. Be responsible. Don't just be a parent. Be responsible parents. And watch what God will do in your life. It looks good to dress them up, to take pictures with them, put them on Instagram. But looks, what looks better is to teach them godly ways. Show them how God does things. Teach them what God requires, and then you've done the will of God for your life. So we come with Caleb, we come with Callie, we come with Kaysen. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you, God, for your power and for your strength. And God, we ask your blessings upon Kayla. We ask your blessings upon Callie, God. Be with her. We ask, God, your hand of protection over Kaysen. Be strong, be powerful, be present in his life. And so, God, we honor you for what you're about to do and what you're doing. We ask your blessings, your power, your anointing, or Caleb, your power, your anointing, or Cali. Your power and your strength, or case in God. Go to work in their life. Put angels all around them even now. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come to them. Let this world not trick them or tempt them to stray outside of your will. And so God, even now, be with their parents. Show their parents what it really means to live godly lives lives that honor you, lives that bring you glory. Pronounce your blessings upon these children. Keep them, God, in the palm of your hands. And God, one day, bring them down to our church where they can give their life to you and yield to your perfect plan. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and together we all say amen. Come on, celebrate these families. Let's all stand.
all the children Bible study Wednesday, 12 noon, 6.30. Don't forget tomorrow we'll be praying together at the 8 o'clock hour. A prayer with so many families. Sister Cheryl Harrison in passing of her husband. His service will be on Friday, 10 o'clock. Sister Tria Mickens in the passing of her grandson. His service also Friday, 10.30 at the March Funeral Home Wabash. Sister Simone Gray in the passing of her father Winston. His service will be here Saturday at the 11.30 hour. Sister Monique Brunson in the passing of her father his service is also set at the Wiley Funeral Home at 11.30. Sister Lakita Brockington, Marcel Turner, the passing of their mother, their service will be on the 27th, 11.30. And Sister Natalie Ward, the passing of her brother. Keep all those families in your prayers. Right after the benediction, all our volunteers, make sure you make your way out to the main entry in the courtyard. have a major a reception for you to tell you thank you for all you do for ministry. I appreciate you. Look at someone and just say, I appreciate you. I thank God for you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord smile upon you. May the joy of the Lord be your strength. God bless you. See you throughout the week. Take care. <laughs>